Now I want to talk about Lyft. Uh, it's an app company. It lets you hail a ride. Obviously, we all know that. It's going public soon, and they're beating Uber to the punch. Come on in, market watcher Rebecca Walser. Rebecca, welcome back. Are you going to buy Lyft shares? I just might do. It's just exciting to be able to actually buy, uh, you know, an IPO for a ride sharing company. So uh, it's exciting. It's interesting, you know, the the race between Uber and Lyft. They obviously are winning it. They're obviously a lot smaller, so that makes a lot more sense. But also, Stu, you know, they have this super voting block that Uber is saying they're going to have one vote, one share. Big difference. Yes, that's very that's true. But look, this IPO of uh, Lynch, uh, well, I'm talking, Lyft, I'm sorry, it opens the door for us ordinary people to invest in a whole new range of high tech uh, companies. And we've had the social networks go public, okay, a few years ago. Now it's this new form of internet based company. I think it's a terrific opportunity for all investors. Whether you like the companies or not, this is a new area. It is. You're absolutely right, Stu. It's a new area, and it's exciting, and uh, it's going to be a big year, I think, for IPOs. 2019, it could be the biggest year for IPOs in tech in a long, long time. So we're really excited about that. I don't know about the timing for the end of March. You know, we've got Europe Brexit happening that same time frame. That's a little bit scary to me. I think that might cause some ripples globally, and then people won't want to go IPO that time frame. So we'll have mm. to see if it actually happens at the end of March. I just like the idea. Rebecca, stay there, please. Going to come back to you in a moment. Now, I've got to talk about Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, founder, he's going to meet Britain's culture secretary at uh, Facebook's headquarters in California today. Uh, this is following a report in which Facebook and other social media outlets were called digital gangsters by the Brits. Jason Chaffetz, come on back in. Seems to me that it's going to be Europe that regulates Facebook mm -hmm. way before we do. Yeah, I think if you're Alphabet and uh, your Facebook and your Twitter, you really all eyes are on Europe. Uh, not only do you have these digital gangster comments and the push by the uh, by the UK, and uh, you know you have these these issues about the right to be forgotten. You trade your data mm. inf information. Shouldn't somebody be able to get out of that contract? And probably the most significant thing yesterday was the EU endorsing copyright reform. Mm. This means that anybody who produces digital content is going to be able to charge an alphabet or a Facebook. They're not just going to be able to upload this for free. They're going to have to get permission and they may have to pay royalties in order to have content on their websites that they've normally gotten for free. Jason, can you give us any insight into what kind of regulation we might see in America? I, I think we are lagging behind. Uh, I think the focus will be on children and digital privacy, the ability for people to grab that information back. In this country, you're allowed to enter into a contract with, say, Alphabet at 13 years old. But what if you change your mind? What if you say, I no longer want to be in that, co in that contract, and I want that information back. I don't want that out on the Internet. I think at some point, Congress is going to have to address that. And then when you have data loss and data theft, and you have places like Facebook reselling your information, there's going to be some lawsuits that I think will change that direction. But Congress is woefully, woefully behind the UK and, and uh, certainly behind Europe. I think you're right. Jason, thanks for joining us. See you again soon. Thanks very much. Thank you. Let's get back to your money. Quick look at futures. We're going to be down maybe 50 points uh, for the Dow Industrials. Uh, we do have two stocks that are dragging on the Dow this morning, Johnson & Johnson and Nike. Oh, so what you're looking at now is live pictures from inside the room the, where the China trade oh. meeting is taking place. Secretary Mnuchin there. Uh, I can see Larry Kudlow to yep. his right. Uh, all the top names are there, and they're faced by the Chinese delegation. The meeting the st is just started. Now, this is a photo op, as it's called. This is where they spray the room. Everybody can be seen, and they're all going to be talking. You're not going to hear what they're talking about. And we, we hope that at some point there will be a statement as to what's come out of this current meeting. But at the moment, they're getting together. It's a very high-level meeting. And that's what everybody's looking for. Yeah. That's what he got. Okay. It's what do you got, Justin? What do you say? 
I'm, so, I'm terribly sorry. Edward Lawrence is standing by. He's got details of what's going on. Edward, tell us, please. Yeah, uh, Varney, just a, a, a little bit of insight as to what's going on inside. Reuters is reporting that the, they will work on six memorandums of understanding that the U.S. has with trade issues with China. Uh, they will cover a lot of things. Also, a 10-point shorter list to reduce the trade deficit that we have with China. Uh, according to Reuters, these memorandums will cover these areas, the forced transfer of technology, intellectual property. The U.S. wants China to stop those forced ventures where the U.S. has to turn over technology to Chinese companies. All also make laws that tighten up their patent filings uh, so they don't steal the patents what the U.S. files it with China. Also, a memorandum of agriculture, buying more agricultural products, allowing our products into their market, open up the access there. Financial services is another memorandum. That is going to cover letting uh, banks do business in China as well as Visa and MasterCard, something the U.S. Treasury Department has been pushing for. Now, China has been moving that way a little bit, but they really want to open up the market to those. Also, remove non-tariff barriers. They stop manipulating their, their currency as well, uh, buy more U.S. products the, to reduce the overall trade deficit. So they've got a lot of talking here, uh, and this is going to be very high-level talks today and tomorrow. We'll get an update from the U.S. side after tomorrow as to exactly what went on. But again, it looks like six memorandums of understanding. So uh, Edward, just one moment, please, yeah. before you go. Uh, I want to make sure I got this right. Six memorandums of understanding, yes. two of which would deal with very thorny issues, yeah. intellectual property mm -hmm. and forced turnover of technology. Did I get that right? Exactly, and and very specific. Uh, the U.S. Trade Representative says he's putting enforcement mechanisms into these memorandums. Very specific enforcement. Very specific uh, sort of triggers for those enforcements. If the Chinese don't follow through, uh, the U.S. is very concerned that the Chinese will make these agreements and then just ignore them going forward. Okay, that sounds promising to me. Edward Lawrence, right on it. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. You share that? See, it feels Absolutely. Like, it feels though like still structural thorny issues remain. Yes. And but, they have to get consensus but on they're it. They're getting them down on paper. Yeah. yeah. A memorandum on these two thorny issues here. Well, IP uh, is massive and forced share technology. Well, we, Those are two big ones. But yeah. And there's no indication China will bend on that. No, that's true. To that, right? That's so, all true. Yeah. But they got it on paper. There's the meeting. They're yeah. holding mm. it right now. That, I, I have to believe that's progress. I'm trying to look yeah, at the Yeah, it feels like futures. progress. You, you know, they, um, they have to get consensus. You wonder if the president will meet one-on-one -on -one with, pres uh, with President Xi of China. Yeah. We're looking for that as well. Uh, I, this, this news is just coming to us as we speak. I would have thought it would make some difference to the Dow Industrials, but we're still down about 50, 60 points. I thought of it as positive news, well, but I don't see a positive reaction on the market. It's still wait and point. see, but to see them at the table facing yeah. each other and talking about these issues is positive. If we get any positive headlines, I think that could move the market. Okay, Rebecca Walser still with us. You're our money guy uh, person, I should say, of this particular block. <laughs> so, Rebecca, I'm reading that as positive. You heard what Edward Lawrence had to say. You saw the video of the meeting. You think it's positive? Oh, Stu, to be a fly on that wall, yeah. I, I, absolutely it's positive. Six de dedicated, uh, directed memorandums of understanding is huge. I mean, obviously, like Liz mentioned, there are still some things that I didn't hear in there that I'd like to hear, but you know what? This is China. We're not going to get a perfect deal. We are so much further ahead under President Trump than we have ever been. This is huge news. The market should love this. Overall, you're still bullish, I take it? I mean, yes, yes. I mean, we, we've got some struggles, you know, and this is positive news. So this is this makes me definitely think bold. Yes. Uh, Rekha, hold on a second. I've just got this uh, uh, presidential tweet coming in.